What's up guys? Welcome to A Restarter's Life. My name is Chris. Thank you so much for joining me. In this episode, I'm going to go over my $26,000 in sales last month. And the question always pops up, which is how much money did you really make last month? So let's go over that. And also the most important question, which is how can you guys keep track of a multi-platform reselling business? Uh, for me, I sell on eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, and other. Other is like StockX, TradeZ, Local, Friends, Together, Bonanza. I group all of those into other just because there's, there's not very many sales on those different platforms. So for me, just four platforms. The short answer um, on twenty. Six thousand dollars in sales last month is seventy-eight hundred. I made seventy-eight hundred dollars profit in this new public store. Um, I'm going to go over how I do that and how you guys can do it too. And it's relatively straightforward. But you can go into eBay. You can go to your performance page. Click on sales. Reconcile this with PayPal. If you use PayPal or if you use Manage Payments um, through eBay, this should be correct. This is what I did last month. It's a little low because there's there's two less or there's less days in february and also this store is new so it does it's, it's not stable yet so it, it could be a little bit better i would expect around thirty thousand with the amount of stuff that i have listed in the store which is around one hundred and twenty thousand. so a little lower than i had hoped for but that's okay because i understand that the store is 20 percent bigger at the end of the month than in, than in the beginning um okay now on poshmark i only had 150 listings cross-listed on Poshmark and Mercari, I had $2,247 in sales on Poshmark, $1,000 in sales on Mercari, but you have to manually count those. And then other platforms like StockX, Goat, etc. All grand total, $26,000. I made $7,800 net profit. After that, I also need to subtract my monthly subscriptions. Okay, so I have an eBay store subscription. I use different softwares like List Perfectly, Sellhound, Snap. I use Simple Posture to share my closet. Um, you can't, it's not the most effective way to share your closet. In my opinion, it's better to have somebody manually do it. This is sort of like a, a lazy way to share your closet. That's not as effective. Um, I also have a bookkeeper. I also have rent. I also have inventory insurance. Adding all those together for me personally is almost $400, uh, actually not including rent. But, um, for, for me, I actually rent a $1,500 a month space. So for me, total, grand total, everything is almost $2,000 in expenses per month. Um, but $7,800 for me is not including, the only thing I haven't subtracted out of the $7,800 is my rent. So other than that, that gives you an idea of what I made in this public store. That's a little difficult to um, calculate because this public store only takes up 30% of the space that I'm renting. Um, and again, this is why I recommend that you guys customize your own spreadsheet for your own purposes. Um, get someone's spreadsheet, either get a free one from somebody online, or if you want to get mine for 35 bucks, once you download it, go to file, come down to make a copy, make your own copy, ask me or whoever how to customize it for your own purposes. And again, it's just going to come down to what platforms do you sell on and what do you want to keep track of? Do you want to do it one by one? That's how I recommend people who are just starting do it. Because again, I want you guys to really focus on clear. A clear business is more important than a big business because a clear business can scale to any size. Um, there's plenty of people who will invest in your business, including me, if you actually know how long it takes for you to get your money back and how much uh, profit you're actually making. Um, so in this example, there's $223 in profit before the subscriptions. In this example, this store loses $150 a month. Um, so I would, no one would invest in this company because it doesn't make sense, right? So you'd have to think about, okay, how do I reduce all these monthly subscriptions that I have? O or can I do some of that myself? But more importantly, I think you could, you could actually raise the amount of revenue that you make in your store. This store, this fictional store only has one item listed, two items unlisted and 11 items that sold. So you're going to see, okay, if I made $223 with 11 items, if I want to 10x that and do $2,000 profit, then I need 111 items to sell each month. Then you need to back out how many items do you need to sell that many. So hopefully this makes sense. Again, I recommend you maybe watch this video again with a notepad and just mark down what is it that you're trying to keep track of? Is it the number of transactions? Do you care about that? In the end, you could just do, this is how much money went into my bank account, 26000 and I subtract things like shipping, so um, pirate ship, which is fantastic. 
I can see that last month I spent $3,200 in, um, in shipping. So I could just say $26,000 minus $32,000 in shipping. I'm sorry, $3,200 in shipping minus $4,000 in fees. I can tell you that because I just did the numbers this morning. That's how much I spent in fees. eBay fees, Poshmark fees, Mercari fees, TradeZ, whatever. All those added together, $4,000. So you could just do $26,000 minus $32,000 minus $4,000 for marketing fees minus whatever your rent is minus all the receipts that you paid for that month. That's called cash accounting instead of accrual. Um, so that means you're subtracting what you purchased this month instead of the, t the cost of the items that's sold. So there's different ways of accounting. Again, assume this channel is entertainment purposes and ask a CPA, but he's going to tell you the same thing. You, there's two ways of doing your accounting. So you can subtract 26,000 minus 3,200 minus 4,000 minus cost of goods sold equals $3,800 or $7,800. That'll give you an idea of my average cost of goods sold if you try, want to figure that out on your own. But again, this is just a simplified way of doing it. You can be very detailed and granular and keep track of every single item, um, which in my opinion is not that difficult as long as you have a process like this. So in this specific spreadsheet, when you buy something, you come down here to live, you enter in the item SKU. So you make up a SKU for the item. You write down where it is so that you don't lose it. You write down how much you, you paid for it and when you bought it. That takes like 15 seconds. Okay, so it takes 15 seconds to do that. Then the second part, when you sell an item, you mark it sold. So you're gonna come here, mark it sold. You're gonna come to the spreadsheet and move it into the month that it's sold. You're gonna enter in how much it's sold for. You're gonna enter in how much it costs for shipping. And that's it. It's gonna calculate the rest of it for you. This entire process takes only 30 seconds. So everyone has enough time to keep track of it. They're just too lazy to set up a system to do it. And don't be one of those people. I recommend that you just understand exactly what's going on. You are welcome to email me suggestions at chrisadailyrefinement.com. I don't really do consulting. I'd rather you talk to an actual CPA because I'm not licensed to talk to you about your finances. But again, I kind of have a good idea of how this, is, how this works. And I do know from meeting all a lot of big sellers, everyone has their own custom solution. So it's important to take this seriously because honestly, I, only, I don't have that much time to work in my reselling business. I only work on reselling 18 hours a week. And I learned that from other big resellers that I met that usually have a full-time job. Um, people who resell full-time usually do between 50 and 100 items a week. Please write that down. If you guys are doing this full-time and you list more than 100 items a week, you are in rare air. There's very, very, very few people who can list more than 100 items per week. And that's because they're too obsessed with the wrong things. They're not focused on procedures that make their listing easier. They're scheduling. That's the part that there are not a lot of resource courses on, but that's the main reason that helps you get into a flow is do you do the same thing every day? Do you have sourcing set up? Do you have procedures? Do you have a photography station? Do you have an inventory system? need to have some kind of system in order to grow that. But most people only list 50 to 100 items a week. And I want to say that only means there's so much involved with reselling that it takes a lot of time. So people underestimate how much time it takes to do it. And this is why people with a full-time job do better because they already know they don't have very much time. So they, have, they get really efficient right from the beginning and they usually have help. And they usually have extra money from working to do it. So again, it's really funny. The people who are trying to escape the nine to five to resell are the least likely to actually make it because they don't have the capital and they don't have the organization and they don't value their time enough. They have 168 hours a week to work on reselling and they work less than 20. But the people who have 20 hours a week to resell might resell 10 of them. So someone with less time, kids, and a family might make more money than you reselling. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? It's, it's insane. Like I see, if I went down to eBay, I mean, I've been to eBay open a few times now. I've met multiple seven-figure sellers who do it part-time. Like just on for fun. They do, do a million dollars a year on, um, on eBay. So again, it just comes down to systems 
being able to do this. Now, I just gave you guys sort of the blueprint. It takes about one, 30 seconds to one minute to enter in and, and um, remove, remove, I'm sorry, enter in an item and then reconcile it after the fact when it sells. Also, I added in here, if you cross list right when you mark the item sold, you should remove it from the other platforms. Okay, pretty straightforward. Um, last stop before I go, uh, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Um, but finally, the part that is really, really, really important is um, you have to understand this takes time. Okay, so don't overwhelm yourself and try to do this in one time. It's taking me several years to really figure out a, a simpler way to do this. But again, if you're just starting, one bank account, one credit card. How much money is going into that bank account? How much money are you spending from that bank account for reselling? That's it. When you're getting started, start there and then slowly add on all these things so that it makes more and more financial sense to you. And again, if you have a business that's really clear, you can grow it to any size. If you have a business that's not clear, it doesn't matter what size it is. It's you don't really understand what's going on and then you can never really grow at the pace that you want. And again, that's how I feel like you guys should treat reselling. Everyone has their own definition of what success is for reselling, but at least you should know what it takes to build your own definition. If you want to make $500 a month, at least you should know how to do that. Um, once you know how to do it, you can do it or not. My definition is going to be different than your de definition, but don't be one of those resellers that has no idea what their goals are because then it doesn't matter what items you saw in your store. It doesn't matter the size of your store. It doesn't matter how you spend your time. And I think everything matters. So appreciate your guys' time. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next show.